Hey Chantu, it's Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. Hello from Sydney. I am Danielle Stein Fairhurst and I'm a financial modeling specialist. Hey everyone, this is Ken Pulse from Excel Guru and Skillwave.training. Hello there, I'm Sumit Bansal from FromPixel.com. Hi everyone. This is Boriana Petrova from Bulgaria. Hello, my name is Alan Murray from ComputerGarGuard.com. And today, these six Excel experts are going to share with you 12 of their favorite tricks. This one is going to be epic. To start off, here is Bill. Hey, Chanzu. It's Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. I'll give you a couple of fill handle tricks. Of course, if we have Monday and we grab the fill handle and drag, we get the days of the week. Everyone knows that. Have the number one, though, and you grab the fill handle and drag, it's going to give you one, 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 unless you hold down the control key. Hold down the control key, and all of a sudden, Excel can count. But even if you know that trick, filling one to 100,000 with the fill handle is going to take forever. So instead, come out here to the Home tab, Home, Fill, Fill Series. We're going to fill in columns, step value of one, stop value of 100,000. Click OK, and bam, just like that, filled 100,000 cells. All right, that was the easy one. Here's the next one. Icon sets. No one knows this trick. Ooh, no one knows it. In that case, we'll come back to Bill's secret trick at the end. Meanwhile, here is both Alan and Sumit with some data tricks. Hello there, I'm Sumit Bansal from TrumpExcel.com. The first trick that I want to show you is about moving rows and columns in Excel. So here I have the store sales data and you can see that the store numbers are not in the right order. So I've stored 1, 4, 3, 2 and 5 and I would want this to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what I need to do is rearrange this data. Now, if I want to move store to data from here to column C, the traditional way of doing it would be I would come to column C, insert a new column, then copy this data from store to paste it in the new inserted column and then delete this data. And without a Saturday stay over that fair difference will be one thousand. Let me show you a faster way to do this. So I'm going to first select this data here with this data selected. I'm going to hold the shift key on my keyboard and then bring the cursor to the edge of the selection. When I do that, you'll see that the cursor changes into these four pointed arrows. Now I'm going to click the left mouse button and drag this to the left, which is where I want to put this data, bring this data. So now you see that there's this, this thick green line that appears. So when this thick green line appears just where I want this data, which is to the right of store one, I'm going to leave the mouse button. And when I do that, this moves the data from column E to column C. Hello, my name is Alan Murray from computergarguard.com. My first tip is to structure your tabular data in tables. So on screen, I have a table named TBL cells, which has information about a store, a region, and a total. On this other worksheet, I would like to sum the totals for the region in cell B3, and I'll be using a sum ifs function for this. So write in sum ifs. I can easily select the sum range by simply referring to my table TBL cells, entering an open square bracket so it lists all of the elements of that table. This is terrific. From here, I select the total column, close that off and move on, do a similar thing for the range where I select the region and finish off with the cell to the left there and I have a sum ifs fast to write and also when people look at this formula very meaningful with the table references. Staying on the topic of data we normally use Power Query to clean up or pre-process data. Here is Ken with an excellent tip on how to use Power Query. Hey everyone, this is Ken Pulse from Excel Guru and Skillwave.training. So just to let you know about my file here, I've actually created a files list query that connects to a folder of text files that I want to combine. I reference that to make a transactions query and then I combined all the files. And that's resulted in a whole bunch of queries created in one instance of Excel. And if you work with Power Query a lot, you'll know that when I now go to hit close and load, it's gonna load a whole bunch of these to my worksheets. And I really only want transactions on my worksheet. The problem is I can't choose one load destination for one query, it's the same for everything. So what I've done 
is I've customized my load behavior so they all go to connection only by default. Then I can do this where I right click load to and load it to a table for just the query I want. So to customize your load behaviors, you go to data, get data, query options, and then you click on the data load tab. And the default load to settings are right here. Normally they're set like this, use standard. And then when you check this box, you'll find that load to worksheet is checked. That's the normal load behavior. You don't want that. We're going to clear both these two. And that now leaves us with connection only by default and gives us total granular control. Apart from Power Query, there are many other new features within Excel, especially Excel 365. Here is Daniel and Boriana sharing some of the powerful things that you could do with Excel 365. Hi, everyone. In this file, we have three columns. First is a cost center. The second is a product ID. And the third is some amount. The first trick is a new quick way to create a formula that should be populated for all other cells in the same column. In the past, we used to create a formula by typing equal, select cell, multiply by some percentage, press enter, and copy the formula. Now, there is a quick way, just type equal, select all cells, again multiply by some percentage, and just press enter. Voila! Hello from Sydney. Tip number one, get Excel for Microsoft 365 and use it. So 365 has got so many cool new features and they're bringing out more all the time. So what I recommend to you is to do whatever you have to do to beg, borrow or steal. The latest update and then work out what's new and learn how to use it. Trust me, keep up to date and you will look like an absolute rock star at work. So some of the, uh, the new tools that you absolutely have to try out. Firstly, dynamic arrays. They're probably the biggest change to Excel ever and they're particularly relevant for financial modelers like me. Now one of my favorites is the unique function. Honestly, I do not know how I ever lived without it. I just use it all the time. I mean, it's, it's like having a pivot table without having to create a pivot table. If you make charts from your data, here is a handy trick from Alan that you must know. The second tip I would like to share is being able to reference cell values for your chart labels. So here I have a simple chart with some regional sales totals and I want the percentage change values as data labels. I select my chart, go to add in a chart element, open up the data labels options that open on the right hand side. I can remove the value if it's not of interest to me and add in values from cells. From here, you simply select the cells that you would like to use, click OK, and there it is. And you can even use this to bring in icons and emojis and that kind of fun stuff. Or maybe you make the pivot tables, but there is one annoying behavior of pivot tables when you make them from Power Query. Here is Ken again. Now the second tip I want to show you, I'm going to go insert and we're going to insert a real quick little pivot table. We'll drop it on the same worksheet here. There we go. I'm going to put my file name on here. I'll put my amount on values and my vendor on my rows. I'm just going to go and flip over to look at my queries here. This is pulling multiple files from a folder. So I'm just going to go and add one more file right in here. There we go. And now we'll come back over and hit data, refresh all. And the challenge is the query refreshed, but the pivot table didn't. So if I do it again, it shows up. And the challenge here is that it actually refreshes the pivot first, then the query and the table second. So you have to do it twice, meaning if it's a big data set, it takes a long time. I don't want that behavior. I actually want to change this up. So when I hit refresh, it just works the first time. 
So I'm going to go right click on my transactions query. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to uncheck this enable background refresh. And now I'm going to go back and just to make a change here, I'm going to delete this file here. So what I want is when I hit data refresh all, it updates the query and the pivot table at the same time. Let's go back to Daniel and Sumit for some excellent tricks on how to handle when you have to work with either two files or you want to see one file twice. So in this case, I have this workbook, which is 2021 sales data. And I also have another workbook, which is 2020 sales data. Now, if I'm comparing the data, I would have to go back and forth in these workbooks. But what I can do is open these workbooks side by side so I can see the data on both these workbook at the same time. So to do that, I'm going to open one of the workbooks and make sure that all the workbooks that you want to see side by side are open. Then go to the view tab here and then click on arrange all. And when you do that, it opens the arrange windows dialog box. Here I'm going to select vertical because I want one window on the left and one on the right. So these are arranged vertically and then I can compare it side by side. You can also choose these other options if you want. And now when I click OK, you'll see that instantly I have 2021 sales data on the left and 2020 sales data on the right. So I can see the entire data in one single screen. I have been finding this really helpful when I do my taxes, where I have my bank statements and my credit card statements open side by side so I can quickly compare and do all the findings. So let's say here you are uh, you're in a you're in a Zoom or Teams meeting and you are sharing your screen and uh, you know you're talking about these numbers and uh, during a bit of a lull in the conversation you think hang on I just want to check what I've got in this over here but you're sharing your screen and you don't want everybody to see it uh, so what you could do is uh, go into a new window like that and that actually opens up the same document but it opens it up twice so what you can then do is uh, put that onto a second screen so there you go just a couple of tips let's say you got a table which has some values and subtotals inside it and you just want to make a grand total here is Boriana with an excellent trick my second tip is how to create grand total if we have subtotals actually we have each total per each product twice. Once, if we select all this cell, in the status bar, there is a sum number that shows us what is the subtotal for this product. And if I select and subtotal, actually the sum is presenting twice. The idea to find a grand totals is the same. All amount plus subtotals generate grand total twice. If we divide sum of all cell, if we divide this by two, we will find the appropriate total. And now we are back to the trick that Bill is talking about, the one that no one knows. Let's take a look at it. Here's the next one. Icon sets. No one knows this trick. Here's an icon set with green, yellow, red, and I've set it up for six for green, five for yellow, everything else in red. Here's another icon set. And I've set this up so red will never appear. Uh, pink is three, gray is two, and then the black is one. But I want to combine both of those and have six icon sets. Here are the steps. We start out with the correctly formatted uh, pink and then add in the icon set for green, yellow, red. That completely overwrites things, you would think. We go into conditional formatting, manage the rules, and you see that both rules still exist. Now, I need to come in and edit this rule so it works for six and five. So greater than or equal to six, greater than or equal to five. Click OK, click OK. We still have two rules, and the first rule is the one that I want to have up here for four, five, and six. Uh, we notice that we're in cell A3. That's going to be important. I'm going to copy this, come back and select the numbers like this, and then Alt F11 for VB in VBA, Control G for the immediate window, and then paste in the code like this. Selection.format conditions once. In other words, the first formatting rule has a formula. This property is not <laughs> exposed in the Excel user interface at all. The formula says if the value in the cell, and that's the top left corner cell of our selection, 
is greater than three, then this rule is on, otherwise it's off. I've successfully have six in green, five in yellow, four in red, three in pink, two in gray, and one in black. You can also use it to have two different rules for data bars. So in this case, uh, the first condition is only true for 85 and below. Uh, the second condition then shows up for the high scores, right? So uh, the data bars are all working. They're all set for 50 to 100, but when someone goes up to above 85, their bar turns green. Hot, hot tip from Dave Gainer on the Excel team. Unfortunately, because Microsoft won't keep anything about Excel 2007 on their website, no one knows it. Thanks, Chengdu. I hope you enjoyed these 12 Excel tricks. Together, these six people help many millions of us on regular basis with their Excel Power Query or data knowledge. I highly recommend that you check out their website and YouTube channels. I have put the links for that in the description below. Please check them out and subscribe to those things. You will benefit, but obviously you get to give back a little love as well. Big thanks for watching this video and of course many many thanks to Alan, Bill, Ken, Boriana, Daniel and Sumit, all our wonderful guests. Thank you so much, I'll catch you again in some other video. Bye.